So in our next season review, we've got Burnley, who after playing the Premier League's 38 games, secured 5 wins, 9 draws and unfortunately 24 losses, which ended up in the eventual relegation from the Premier League. It was their first season back in the Premier League after promotion from the Championship, and despite investment into the squad and the retention of Vincent Company as the club's manager, unfortunately this wasn't enough to ensure any more than 19th in the Premier League. One thing that is definitely for sure though is that the club deserves credit for sticking by Vincent Company even when things were difficult and the results just weren't coming. It's so easy and frankly too easy for clubs nowadays to sack off their managers thinking that it's going to instantly turn results around rather than trying to stick with the process and giving managers time nowadays. Because Premier League status is so lucrative so many clubs throw the dice to try and save their seasons and eventually usually fail. And so it was refreshing that the club stuck with their young manager Vincent Company. Although now unfortunately it looks like they are going to lose him. But we'll cover that at the end of the video when we look ahead to next season. The club also secured a lot of new signings to refresh the squad after championship promotion. And it was an active summer transfer window. As they secured the signing of Zeki Amdouni from Basel. Who was a new young centre forward along with new young goalkeeper James Trafford from Manchester City. This was a big gamble by the club but it was also a confidence in youth as the goalkeeper was highly sought after and they may even struggle to keep hold of him going into the summer as despite their relegation and him losing his place over the course of the season due to inexperience it's still looking like he's going to be seeking a move away back to a Premier League club. Another youngster was Aaron Ramsey who was also bought in from Aston Villa along with Jordan Bayer who came in from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Both of these were brought in to bolster the attacking midfield and centre-back positions respectively, whilst they also managed to take advantage of Sheffield United's financial position by signing Sander Berger from them, which was also a tactical manoeuvre, being that it was weakening one of their relegation rivals. At least he was brought in with some kind of semblance of Premier League experience though, which gave the squad some much-needed experience in the midfield. Significant funds were also spent on teenager Wilson Odebeer, whilst Dara O'Shea and Michael Obafemi were brought in from the Championship. The centre-back and striker were both brought in from West Brom and Swansea respectively. Also continuing the heavy influx of new bodies, Hannes Del Croy came in from Anderlecht, and Nathan Redmond came in for much-needed experience on a free transfer from Besiktas. And the club also brought in a further young teenager in Luca Coliosho. The club also managed to secure the signing of one of their brightest lights, Jacob Brun Larsen, on loan from Hoffenheim for the season. Whilst in the January transfer window, they also managed to bolster their front line by bringing in David Datro Fafana on loan from Chelsea. The young striker's loan wasn't working out in the Bundesliga and so the decision was made to bring him back to Chelsea and loan him straight back out to Burnley. As you can see, Burnley's whole transfer philosophy was based around youth, which was probably built around the fact that the club wasn't plush with cash despite the Premier League promotion, as when they went down from the Premier League, the close was very close to going out of business as they had an immediate loan to pay back. But last season in the Championship, the club went through a complete rebuild and managed to come out of it in a much more sustainable manner. But I would suspect that the emphasis on youthful signings for the club was built around a decision that they didn't have the money to go out and buy ready-made established stars in the Premier League. Unfortunately though I would say this is the major thing that bit the club along with the fact that Vincent Company had a very rigid way of thinking whilst the team was getting absolutely battered on the field through inexperience. For the majority of the season Vincent Company decided to stick with his principles rather than trying to batten down the hatches and scrap out results. The tendency to try and stick with playing an attacking philosophy of football I think was one of the major causes of the club's eventual relegation from the Premier League after the first season back. Unfortunately, by the time things started to stick towards the end of the season, it was far too late, as in the first 28 games of the season, they only won three times. Burnley fans may counteract it and say that their season wasn't as bad as Sheffield United's, but when you counter in the fact that the club spent over £100 million in the summer transfer window, the season was a complete flop. Going into the season, there was a lot of hope around Vincent Company as a Premier League coach, as he was being linked consistently with the new manager roles at Tottenham and Chelsea, and was also linked with being a long-term successor of Pep Guardiola. But after the Premier League season being such a flop, he'll now have to rebuild his reputation, and it looks like he's now starting to take steps to rebuild his reputation by taking the opportunity to become the next Bayern Munich manager. 
Personally, though, at the moment, I don't see anything that shows that he is deserving of a senior management position at a big club like Bayern Munich. And being that he spent such significant funds on bringing in a lot of young players, he's unfortunately now decided to bolt and run for an opportunity elsewhere rather than trying to get Burnley back up from the championship with such a bright young attacking squad. As although the squad was nowhere near Premier League ready, you would have to say that the squad that's gone down now is probably better than the squad they went down with before and he probably would have taken the championship by storm. And I do think he needs to go some way to rebuild his reputation as a coach as it didn't work out at Anderlecht and it hasn't worked out overall at Burnley with one championship promotion and one Premier League relegation. But if there's one thing that the club can try and do over the course of the summer, whoever the new manager may be, is to try and keep as much of this young talent in the squad as possible. Although they probably knowingly bought these young players knowing that their resale value would hopefully inflate, which would help the club financially more in the long term. Underlying statistics for the squad don't read well for the club either as the attacking possession-based football may have been brilliant for the championship to achieve 101 points. But in the Premier League, they went on to rank 19th for shots, 19th for shots on target faced, 19th for set-piece goals, 17th for set-piece goals conceded, and over the course of the season, they had a tendency to panic when caught in possession, which meant that they went on to make rushed decisions in the middle of the pitch. And so sadly, the club statistically were right where they were in the league standings. The club's player of the season was voted as Sander Berg, but even that says everything about Burnley's season being the fact that the fans weren't truly behind him, with a lot of the fans calling his place in the team in question. And consistency of selection was also a major flaw in Burnley's season, as only three players played more than 70% of Burnley's games over the season. One of those was the goalkeeper in James Trafford, but unfortunately, as we know, eventually he was pulled out of goal. And so that kind of says everything about Burnley's season. I just hope for James Trafford's long-term development that he isn't harmed by the experience at Burnley, especially as it looks like he's going to have to take a number two goalkeeping role at Newcastle as that looks to be his next destination over the summer in a transfer from Burnley. One bitter pill this season for Burnley was their breakout player Coley Osho, who was looking like he was taken to the Premier League like a duck to water and was one of their standout performers until unfortunately against Wolves in December he got a serious knee injury, thus ruling him out the final five months of the season. The main highlight of the season for the Burnley fans was probably the 5-0 demolition of relegation rival Sheffield United, although that really says about the terrible performance of Sheffield United rather than how well Burnley played in that game. And so as we finish this season, it looks like it's going to be another summer of change at Burnley. With the club back in the championship looking to bounce back at the soonest opportunity, they'll now be on the lookout for a new manager. Although they'll be taking £10 million worth of compensation in exchange for him to take the Bayern Munich job. And I'm sure the new manager will come in with their new ideas. And it will be interesting to see who they appoint going into the summer. If they can keep hold of and maintain some of their youngest squad members and also build on that with some much needed experience, maybe from championship level, then next season in the championship promises to be a much brighter season for the Burnley fans. But Burnley fans, let us know in the comments below what you made of your season and also let us know in the comments who you would like as your next manager next season. But as always, thank you very much for watching the video and please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future football content.